Welcome to What's Trending from South by Southwest. I'm Shira Lazar coming to you live from the Samsung Blogger Lounge. A lot of excitement here because we have some great guests. We're going to be talking about 2012 tech trends, and we have some of the brightest minds here at South by Southwest and in the tech industry. We have CEO and co-founder of Foursquare, Dennis Crowley. Thank you so much for being here. And the CEO of Zappos.com and the downtown project now, Tony Shea. So thank you for being here. So let's start off with uh, both of you. I've seen you, you know, since you, since 2010. I interviewed you, I remember, on a, mm -hmm. a stage in 2010 when Foursquare, that was the, the bell of the ball. So how have you seen that evolution? Is this now kind of, do you feel old, like a veteran? Yeah, well, this is my, my seventh South by Southwest. This is the fourth with Foursquare, and this is our third birthday, which is kind of cool. And it's great now because um, we're just kind of a fab, like we're, we're part of the fabric of what goes on here. Like we don't have to ask people to use Foursquare. They just use it to meet up with their friends. They're using it to find places to go. It's just like it's, it's part of what people do here, and that feels good. Like I feel like we've hustled the last couple of years to earn that right, and then we come down and we can just enjoy it with people. And now you had a keynote last yesterday actually yeah i did a keynote with mg siegler just talking about you know the future of foursquare and where we're going and the things that we're excited about and one of the things that came out i saw it everywhere in the press is the fact that you could have sold two years ago and you decided not to uh, yeah we you know we had a, a couple acquisition offers along the way and you know like we i really like what we're doing as a company i love the team that we've put together um you know, and, and then we're still continuing to grow. Like, we're Foursquare is about 100 employees now, about 20 million users. So the thing is, like, it's on a little bit of a, a rocket ship type of course. And, um, you know, we just continue to plug away at it. It's been, it's been a lot of fun. Cool. And Tony Shea, great friend from Zappos, which, um, you know, you at this point, you know, I feel like everyone knows Zappos. You're everywhere. So why is it important to still come to South by Southwest? Uh, I, I mean, one of the great things about South by is just you just run into people left and right. It, it, there's a lot of serendipity that happens, and uh, and you know, some of it can be uh, curated a little bit by checking to Foursquare. And uh, one of the things that we did uh, through Delivering Happiness when we were promoting the book was we got a Delivering Happiness bus that went around South by, and it was interesting because someone actually uh, rather than try to figure out which parties to go to. We had a bartender on board and, and then we were able to travel around and people actually were able to find us and they described it as a physical real life version of Foursquare because we're basically always checking in by going around town. And so it's been great for catching up with people and actually a lot of it uh, is the similar principles applied to what we're doing in terms of trying to help revitalize downtown Vegas. And, it's all about trying to accelerate the serendipity that happens in, on a city level uh, and basically imagine the type of stuff that happens at South by happening every single day in a city and not just once a year. That's so cool. Yeah, and this is a great par project to talk about. And I wanted to bring both of you here because we like to bring, you know, people of all industries and leaders and thought leaders on stage at What's Trending. But specifically, I wanted to talk about 2012 tech trends and where you're both at um, in terms of your companies because you're always at the forefront of, of it all and on top of mind. So, you know, Dennis with Foursquare, I guess, where do you see yourselves now in 2012? How do you keep evolving and keep yourself skyrocketing and increasing in value? Um, yeah, it's, you know, everyone just looks at Foursquare. <clears throat> I guess everyone used to look at Foursquare as just like this check-in service. You know, people use it to check in and unlock points and badges. And that's a story that we've told at South by Southwest for the last couple of years. And it's one of the things that gets new users and I think got a lot of people that are here right now got some really excited about the product. You know, what we're starting to see is that you know, with um, you know, 20 million users and a billion and a half check-ins, like it's a lot of data, and we can start cutting that data up in really interesting ways. So I can tell you, you know, which coffee shops are popular in a random in a neighborhood somewhere in Indonesia, and I can tell you, like based on the restaurants you like in San Francisco, what places you're really going to enjoy in New York or Barcelona. Yeah. And like, you know, we're just building this stuff that really helps people navigate the real world. And it's like, you know, I think, you know, it was a little bit of a, a sneak attack in a way. Like people. Like see that like oh it's Foursquare is kind of cute with the points and badges like no actually we've got a huge big data team that's turning out this like predictive engine that can tell you like what's interesting at any latitude and longitude in the world it's like really cool how do you stay relevant with other apps popping up like you have the Instagrams and now the Buzz app this year highlights yeah 
I, I think we just keep doing what we're what we're doing. Yeah. You know, like I think one of the lessons that we've we've learned, um, you know, as a startup collectively is like don't be distracted by the shiny new thing that's at South by Southwest, like the shiny new thing that's at TechCrunch, right? <laughs> like we just like we have something that we really want to accomplish. Like we've got a good team to do it, and we just keep plugging away at the vision, and you know, eventually we're going to get there. Definitely. Now let's talk about the downtown project, which is so cool uh, for some people who don't know what it is. There is actually a URL, right? Downtown project. <laughs> Downtownproject.com. I just wanted to make sure you said it, so we got it right. I didn't want to mess it up. Um, tell people what you're up to, and you're really building a startup community over there as well. Yeah, so we announced a little over a year ago. Uh, right now, Zappos is located in a suburb of Las Vegas, and we announced a little over a year ago that we'll be moving into the former city hall, and uh, and it's actually located in an area of downtown Vegas that most tourists don't know about. And if, for example, if you go into any of the bars or coffee shops there, you'd have no idea you're in Vegas. There's no gaming. Uh, there's real people there. And there's, there's <laughs> what? An people community. that don't gamble? And it, well, and it's actually, it, it's actually the most community focused place I've lived in. And I, and I lived in San Francisco before and so on. And, and it's in the city you least expect it. So it's kind of like the secret place that locals know about called Fremont East. And originally, we, right now we're in Henderson, we're spread amongst three different buildings, and so we wanted to get everyone under one roof. And, uh, and part of the reason for that is going back to the whole serendipity thing, tr trying to accelerate serendipity, getting employees to run into each other. Now it's not only inside the office, but uh, within the community as well. So we originally thought, let's build a dream campus like Nike or Google or Apple. And we surveyed our employees and asked them, you know, what are your top amenity wishes? And the number one request we got was doggy daycare over human daycare. <laughs> and so, um, wow. and, and then, you know, also things like a gym and so on. And we realized that those other campuses were great for their employees, but they're actually very insular and don't really integrate with or, or uh, contribute to the community around yeah. them. So we decided in, instead of doing that, let's take more of a almost NYU type of approach where the campus blends in with the city and focus on the community and the ecosystem instead and, and then have that ultimately in the long run, it'll help us attract and retain more employees. And so by focusing on the in ecosystem, uh, that's actually what caused Downtown Project to be born. And it's a, we have a $350 million budget. And so you have a $350 million basically fund. Right, and, and it's basically thinking of the startup, as, uh, the city as a startup. So, fifty Super million cool. of that is going into building, helping fund one to two hundred small businesses that help build neighborhood and community, like the bakery, the coffee shop, and so on. Uh, fifty million of that is going into funding tech startup companies. Uh, fifty million of that is going into education, and that includes a partnership with Teach for America, where we're actually um, the the plan is to help a thousand. Teach for America alumni and core members relocate to downtown Vegas, uh, 200 million into building residential and uh, real it's estate. It's incredible. I mean, you you call it instead of ROI, it's ROC. Yeah, we talk like about this. ROC with the C being yeah. community, and and that's actually uh, a lot of it is actually analogous to how we hire at Zappos. So at Zappos, we do two sets of interviews. We do the standard stuff that the hiring manager does, and then our HR department does a separate interview for culture fit, and they have to pass both in order to be hired. Uh, and so, in a lot of ways, what culture is to a company, community is to a city. It's just at a different scale. And so, for tech startups that we fund, we actually have them meet the community first, the tech community, and then if the community thinks it's a good fit and vice versa, then we move on to the kind of the Or else the they have stage. a stoning in the streets if they don't like the company <laughs> or the person. But what's really exciting <laughs> is ev we've already, so part of it is to grow a tech startup community in Vegas, but in the past few months, we've already had five tech startups move from other cities to downtown Vegas. And so the scene is, uh, tech startup scene is just growing like crazy and, and, and it's it was non-existent a year ago. I feel like, you know, in New York, you guys really led this startup community there and as it was blossoming. So how important is culture to the community at Foursquare? Yeah, I mean, some of the stuff that you were saying about like NYU fitting into the you know the fabric of the city, as you were saying that, I was thinking that's kind of like what the, the New York tech startup is all about. You know, it's like people uh, people walk back and forth to work all the time. They walk back and forth to meetings and commute, and it's like that's it. It, it kind of contributes to the, some of the serendipity that you were talking about. Like we see that in the New York tech meetup, uh, the New York tech community. Like yeah. It's not just you know people going to meetups, but it's like you know people overlap at the same bars. People overlap on their way to the coffee shops. People overlap as they're walking back and forth from work and stuff. And you know, New York's become like a really 
I, a really legitimate tech scene over the last couple of years, and it's been it's been kind of cool. To no, see it's grow. super exciting. Well, one person I miss now is Naveen, who yeah. just stepped down. So tell tell me about that and and what's going to be going on moving forward. Yeah, it's um you know my co-founder Naveen decided to uh, to leave the company. Um, you know, it's just what happens with big with when companies hit a certain size, right? And so, like, Foursquare is always changing. Like, my job is so much different than it was a couple of years ago. Um, same thing with Alex, who runs product, and and Harry, yeah. who runs engineering. Um, I think we're gonna, we're going to be just fine. Like, our platform team's going great. Like, we've got everything um, kind of set up, and Nick, he'll be missed, of course. But yeah, like, of he'll course. be he'll be advising us, and you know, continue, he's going to stay on the board for a bit, so it'll be great. Very nice. How are you continue, continuing to work with brands and networks to? popularize Foursquare and get it out more out there to the mainstream. Yeah, we have um, we have a business development team that yeah. does, does a lot of this stuff. Like, I think one of the really interesting things with Foursquare is like, you know, we started it thinking like, okay, people are going to check in, it's points and badges, you know, it's like we had like this, this vision for what it's going to be. And then people just find ways to run with it. Like one yeah. of the really early examples we saw was um, Bravo TV took it and they're like, okay, well, we want people to check into the same places that they watch on our reality TV shows. And I'm like, yeah. that's actually a really cool idea. And we built like badges and promotions around it. You know, we saw the History Channel jump in really early and say, hey, it's not about leaving tips about, you know, what to order at a restaurant. It's about leaving Foursquare tips about historic moments in time like this you know many years ago this park was the scene of this weird battle or you know the very first elevator in New York was uh, happened to be a block away from mm -hmm. Foursquare HQ but you know it's like there's a there's kind of this um this rule of like you know anytime you design a, a piece of social software um, you know the community it, it's really become successful and the community finds their own way to use it like in, in a way that we never actually anticipated and we see that yeah. stuff happening every day with Foursquare. I feel it's like great. you were probably happy when Facebook places kind of People stopped using it. <laughs> no, people people still use Facebook to broadcast location all the time. Like we, we well, push broadcast a lot of, location. Yeah, but. we push a lot of our check-ins into Facebook. Um, you know, but I think like what we've seen over the last couple of years or so is, you know, like it's. I don't think everyone wants to do everything that they do online in Facebook. Um, and so that's why you see things like Twitter succeed. That's why things like Instagram succeed. And that's why you know Foursquare is still still around. Still why we have a, a huge and ever-growing community. Yeah, definitely. Let's talk about the startups that you're investing in, and what do you look for? in those startups when they're pitching you? Uh, well, first is whether they're going to get, whether they're going to contribute to the community, the, yeah. the downtown tech scene. Uh, but really, I think we're interested in anything that just is innovative and, uh, and, and a lot of it is just if I personally find it interesting. So uh, <laughs> one of the companies that is pretty exciting is a company called Remotive. And they basically build iPhone-powered robots. And, and these are so cool. You, you need to check your, it out. Oh yeah, you checked it out. So you plug an iPhone. You go to remotive.com if you want to learn more. And you put an iPhone uh, into this. I think they sell them for $75 or $100. And then you control it with another iPhone. And the cool thing about an iPhone is it already has GPS and video and mm -hmm. accelerometer and, and all this stuff that uh, you know used to cost $10,000 to build into a robot and then it'd be outdated a year later, mm -hmm. uh, whereas they're opening up the API so developers can always add additional capabilities to it. And, and it's pretty fun. So you could, in theory, you know, at your home in New York, you could be here at South By and driving around your house. And you have other sites you're, you've been also investing in. Others. Websites and blogs, and um, I know Paul yeah, Carr's. Paul, Paul Carr, who used to uh, yeah. write for write for TechCrunch, is doing is working on a project. I don't know how much of it is is public right now, but it's uh, basically an iPad based magazine, and uh, and, and he, Paul Carr is someone who spent the last four or five years tra living out of hotel rooms. Literally, he didn't have a place, and then that was a choice, and, though. That, uh, <laughs> no, that, no, that was a, yeah, that I was know. a choice because <laughs> he didn't want to settle down anywhere, and yeah, so for us, it's pretty rewarding <laughs> to know that he's decided to make downtown Vegas his home Definitely. after five years of being a nomad. And I suggest all of you check it out. I've been to downtown Vegas and Tony is usually great with giving personalized tours. <laughs> well, there's actually, um, so we there's this high rise that has 250 units in it and 50 of those units we actually control and about half of those are set up as uh, furnished apartments, basically free hotel rooms. It's and, like a dorm, basically. So you should you yeah, should check it out, Dennis. How we, check it out. Yeah, you should. <laughs> you, and uh, and so it's it, it's our equivalent of the sneak attack thing because uh, basically we tell, oh yeah, you know, free ho hotel room, come stay here for a few days or work remotely for a week, and then they're kind of forced to, <laughs> you know, yeah. go to the local coffee shop and hang out at the local bars, and and then the place just kind of sells itself. So we kind of trick them into discovering the other side of Vegas. Now before we move on to our other questions and to all of your questions. 
questions in the audience. I want to give a special thanks to Samsung, who's been powering this amazing live streaming experience all of South by Southwest. Go to samsung.com slash how Olympic are you to be one of the first to check out the Samsung Olympic Genome Project. It is super cool. I suggest all of you go and check it out. Before we go to the audience, I want to talk about the whole buzz about geolocation-based apps and what your thoughts and how both of you and your companies are taking advantage of that and see uh, it going. Oh, just well, obviously, Jill, you're part of it. Yeah, like the whole thing <laughs> it is, is, about, it. Like, is about location in general. But then um, in terms of, you know, now b being able to literally, I guess, like, tracking the people around you who you might not even be friends with. Yeah, I think one of the things that I'm most excited about with Foursquare, and this is something we've been trying to do for a, a long time with mobile services, is get to the point where you can, like, run these things in your background, like, in the, just in the background, like, run, run um, you know, parts of Foursquare just while it's sitting in your pocket, right? And so, like, you know, it always bugs me out that when I go to bars and restaurants with my friends, like, you know, a lot of us just, like, sit there on our phones the whole time. Yeah. I don't want people, I just, I just don't like the idea of people, like, doing that when they're out in the streets and, like, navigating their way through the city, like, with their head It's actually not phone. safe. Yeah, it's, <laughs> you get hit by cars and run into people. Um, <laughs> But, you know, we've, we've got a product called Foursquare Radar. And it works pretty well so far, and it's going to get a lot better in the future. But the idea is, like, you just turn Foursquare on, you put it in your pocket, you put it in your purse. And as you walk around, uh, Foursquare will buzz you and let you know about things you need to pay attention to. Like, yeah. oh, there's a cool piece of street art over here. Oh, the buddy that is in from Atlanta is two blocks away. Oh, the best restaurant in the city that you have no idea about is two blocks this way, right? And just, you know, being able to use the sensors on the phone to just kind of ambiently, ambiently um, I guess, alert people yeah. about the interesting things that are happening nearby. And I, we've been thinking about this stuff forever and we've been wanting to build it for so long and now the phones are just finally starting to get good enough the battery life is getting good enough the GPS is getting good enough that like all the ideas that we've had like all the crazy things we've been scheming up for the last couple of years we can actually kind of build them and get them in you know get them in people's pockets what's that's the, the line thing. for you guys in terms of invasion of privacy and what's helpful and it brings value to our lifestyles yeah I mean we're saying where is the line yeah oh, or, where, or where do you think it's headed and uh, how well, do we deal with that as yeah, companies we've, we've done pretty good uh, um, like, you know, with Foursquare, everything's based off the check-in. Like, you got to tell Foursquare where you are in order to share it with your friends. And, like, I don't know. I'm just not a big believer in, like, the stuff that trying to tracks you all the time and, and broadcast that back out to other networks. I'm not – I don't think that's going to be a, a big draw for a lot of folks. Um, you know, that being said, like, you know, th there, there are cool things that you can do if the phone is just aware of your location and, like, kind of broadcasting that stuff back. So we're, we're still feeling some of that stuff out. I think you're seeing at South by Southwest, you're seeing a lot of people experiment with some of these passive geo apps. Yeah. Like, you know, there's, like, highlight and glancy. I mean, there's, there's like 20 of them that are out now. Um, and it's cool. And I think you're starting to, like, this is how innovation happens. You know, like, you launch a whole bunch of stuff here, you get 10,000 people to play with it, and then people say, like, oh, this is a little bit creepy, or this is a little bit too much, or it drains my battery too much, or like, whatever it happens to be. You get a whole bunch of, like, interesting feedback and criticism, and then, like, the next round of the stuff comes out six months from now or a year from now, right? And so, like, we look at that stuff, too, and we're trying to learn from everything that's going on as well. Cool. Now, you're dealing with some apps as well. Uh, in terms of geolocation? Yeah. Uh, I guess we're... I mean, ultimately, we're what he's trying to do. We're trying to do just physically. I mean, I guess for it's. Really you need the downtown project down. app. We well, there is a downtown. Uh, we do want. We do definitely do talk about having some sort of thing where it's actually a radar, like where uh, people can, especially Zappos employees, can learn. Oh, you know my friends are in the bar across the street yeah. and so on without having to check in so maybe we can partner on that yeah. oh let's yeah. let's make it happen a partnership on stage just happened in front of I everyone's happens. eyes yeah. we create <laughs> partnerships here at what's trending all right we're going to go to the audience right now because we want to hear from you so uh demon Berger, our executive producer has a microphone for anyone who wants to ask a question live we have someone in back there and thank you all for tuning in online. We really appreciate it. Wait, can I ask a quick question? Yeah. What do you use those 50 apartments for? For uh, so they're uh, part of it is we're, we're so we're we're just leasing them. We don't own them, and yeah. then that way, when a startup like Remotive wants to move in, then we can just transfer the lease over to them. Okay. But half of them are basically so when you come visit, you'll you would stay. It's in one like of a them. try before you buy type of thing. Like you you let people kind of stay for free in hopes that they'll they'll move out there and see the value of the community or? Uh, yeah, well, it, it, it's just for any visitors yeah, to yeah. make it easy for them and frictionless for them to actually just hang come out and downtown. Visit. Okay, yeah. cool, all right. All right, question. Hello. What's your name and? Ewan Spence from South by Southwest, baby.com. Mm -hmm. What's been the biggest mistake you've made with Zappos and Foursquare respectively, personally? Um, I'll answer that first. I, I think the biggest category of mistakes we've made have been in hiring, and I'm guessing that's probably true for most companies. Uh, if you add up 
the bad the cost of the bad decisions that our bad hires made, and then plus those bad hires hired a lot of uh, <laughs> additional bad hires, yeah. and that made costly decisions uh, over the you know past twelve years of Zappos. I, I'd say the cost of those decisions have uh, have cost the company more than a hundred million dollars easily, wow. and so uh, you know that that's an expensive mistake. Um, we've done pretty good on the hiring side. Actually, we've learned a lot about our hiring processes from like the way that you guys run stuff. So thank you. Um, I think our, you know, our biggest mistake is you know sometimes biting off more than we can chew in a sense. You know, like we're we're just really ambitious with the product and we're really ambitious with the roadmap. And sometimes I think, you know, we we try to do too much stuff at once, which is, you know puts a lot of strain on the engineering organization and a lot of strain with the product organization. And um, you know, like I'm as I'm getting more comfortable in my role, I'm starting to realize, like, okay, well, we got to stay really focused. We got to make sure that everyone stays really focused and everyone has a clear vision for what they're doing. And you know, I think it's um, sometimes it gets easy to be distracted, and you know, sometimes we fall victim to that. But we're getting better at it. Definitely. And remember, if you're hearing something that you think is interesting, if you're tweeting it, include the hashtag Samsung SXSW. Thank you. Another question. <laughs> <laughs> Hi, this is Chris Keefe with Sprinkler in Manhattan, and I'm wondering what kind of challenges do you guys find as your organization grows trying to have people cope with social media? Uh, what do you mean, cope with social media in which way? How, do you, how, do you, how does a larger organization cope with... Maybe the real time of maybe your employees, or do yeah. you have a social media etiquette? Oh, yeah. It's, it's funny. Like, uh, you know, so much of what we do is... is um, well, I mean, so many of the people that work at Foursquare, they're just like, they're not social media experts. It's just like, we've just been using these tools for a long time, so we're really familiar with them. And so you know, sometimes you have to repeat, like, hey, at company meetings, remember, there's no blogging the secret stuff that we talk about. <laughs> like, when you're taking Instagram <laughs> photos of our new office, make sure, like, our top secret stuff isn't on the whiteboard. You know, like, <laughs> we, we sometimes have to be really explicit about what's okay and what's not okay. Um, just in, in general, I think because, like, you know, because a lot of the people in the company, myself included, have kind of, like, you know, spent the last 10 years knee deep in a lot of social media stuff, it comes very naturally to the company. You know, like we're, I think a lot of us are very good at Twitter. Like I personally try to get a lot of our employees, um, you know, like to have conversations with um, different Foursquare users. Like if there's a, you know, if someone complains about something, oh, I can't believe Foursquare is broken in this way. And I'll say, hey, you should talk to Mark, our Android developer. Here's his Twitter name and like and encourage that conversation. And just, you know, have people be really transparent and try to keep the company really transparent and just make it seem a lot smaller than it, than it actually is. And, and I guess I'm not sure exactly is this which specific part of the, the question you were trying to get at, but uh, our, our s social media policy or communication policy in general is just be real and use your best judgment. And uh, in general, we try to, I know there's a lot of bigger corporations that put specific guidelines of what you can and can't say under what name, whether it's through Twitter or blogging and so on. And uh, our belief is that you know, most policies are used to address that 0.1% of situations that come up at the inconvenience and expense of the other 99.9%. Mm. .9 so we try to avoid having a policy. We have one more question. So I'm Wendy Meadley from the Social Wendy Group, and I'm an Uber Foursquare user. Thank you. You're welcome. And I actually am curious to, can we do a poll of the room for two things that I'm trying, and I'm curious to see if other people are trying. Is that all right? All right? Sure. Excited. This is live. Let's do it. All right. So anybody else using Foursquare as a Twitter client to feed their social search strategy? <laughs> as, a as a... Yeah. Wait. I didn't even understand. <laughs> yeah, I wasn't, I'm not sure what that means. <laughs> He's like, oh my gosh. All right, so it might be the thing on the Uber whiteboard, right? So actually using Foursquare out and about, taking photos, and then feeding it into Twitter and Facebook is one of the, I think, best things Foursquare actually Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's, what, that's what I use it for, yeah. Right. But then actually doing title tag and search strategy with it. And oh, including your hashtags and, and everything. Yeah, yeah. Oh. Do you hear a lot about it? I, I haven't. It hasn't been something I've been really paying attention to, so it could be happening. It might just be that I'm not aware of it. You know, if you see that happening, like, let us know about it. Because, like, I, know, I just like to see interesting ways that people are using the platform. But, yeah, it's funny. Like, you see... You know, hashtags are kind of born on Twitter, and um, and you know, you, you see that extend to Facebook. You definitely see it in Foursquare. Like you see that the use of the stuff in Instagram as well. It's just like it's funny how like something that's invented on one platform just bleeds out to all the other platforms. Um, finally, to wrap this up, I'm just going to go to both of you and ask: Looking back, you know, a year from now, looking back at 2012, what will be the overall theme in tech that we're going to look back on? The big overall theme in tech. Um, 
I don't know. I mean, also, I'm I'm so like biased towards looking to it from like the from the location perspective. But you know, this came up. This is one of the themes of the keynote yesterday. Like, you know, everyone always asks, like, when are location-based services going to be huge? And I'm like, they already are huge. Like, everyone uses the you know the Google Maps app that's on your iPhone, and people use that every day. Like that's probably one of the most used apps around, and it drives me nuts that like when you open that app, it's just like a blank map when it should be a map of all the cool stuff I should be paying attention to immediately. Mm -hmm. So I think that like first of all, like it's gonna um, people just start to accept the fact like yeah, p location based services are already huge, people are using them all the time, and then they're also like it's the next big thing to really get social. Like all these location tools will get social, and then we'll look back on a year from now and be like, oh my god, I can't believe we lived without these tools. Tony, I, mean, I, I think with the kind of proliferation of just all the, all these different apps and, and technology, uh, I think s people are going to start realizing the value of actually more face-to-face -face interactions, and, and you know it can be powered by technology like Foursquare or Meetup.com and, and so on. But I think uh, you know South by is an example where, uh, and it's not just more face-to-face -face interactions. South by has kind of grown to a crazy, crazy size now, but uh, I, th I think one of the challenges people are, are having is how do you have more meaningful face-to-face yeah. -face interactions, and it gets harder as you know, events or companies. Uh, and as we have more friends within these communities. Right, and, and I mean, even just like us trying to schedule time to just to say hi is, is, is hard, at, surprisingly hard at South by versus yeah. at home in LA or Vegas. Definitely. Can I say one more thing? Yes, like, go for it. So you, what you were saying just reminded me. Scott Heiferman, the guy that started uh, Company Meetup, has a great quote. It's like, you know, you, it's about using the internet to get off the internet. And like, there's, like it's, just, it's a really big idea, and I think you're kind of leaning towards it. And you know, some of the stuff that we're doing at Foursquare is approaching that. But like, you know, using all the tools that we have, all the sensors in our pocket, like the network that we're connected to, just to you know, get to the point where we can you know, get off of our phones and get off of the internet, and yeah, just like yeah. have those connections be made, and then just like live your life. Yeah, yeah. And no matter how quickly or, or how amazing technology uh, advances, uh, our own evolution, biological makeup, is not going to evolve fast enough to. Sure. You know, to change the value of face-to-face -face interactions. So. Well, definitely. On that note, thank you so much for the great and thoughtful conversation. Let's give um, our guests a round of applause. Dennis Crowley. <laughs> Tony Shea. Shira Lazar. <laughs> <laughs> also, do we want to... Oh, is Brian making an announcement? Well, or Delivering oh. Happiness, we do have a book here, a new book. Do you want to uh, just talk about it? Uh, or just mention or it? We'll bring Jen up if that works. So, so there's actually a separate company called Delivering Happiness that... Jen is the CEO, of, and uh, the book came out in 2010, and she'll announce this next part. Thank you. Um, so yeah, I don't know if you guys were here last year when we announced Delivering Happiness officially as a company, and so this time around we're announcing that we just launched the Delivering Happiness comic book. So we actually don't have copies right now, but tomorrow we'll be back at 11, so if anyone wants to come back then to pick up some copies. And also within that, uh, stemming off the whole downtown project conversation, we're giving a free trip to anyone that participates in this um, sweepstakes that we're doing. So basically, it's a free trip to experience downtown Vegas yourself. Uh, take a tour of Vegas and downtown and Zappos and hang out with me and Tony so that we can actually show you what is really going on down there. It's actually really, really exciting. So the information is either on deliveryhappiness.com or in the books that I'll bring tomorrow morning at 11 o'clock. Um, but yeah, it's an exciting time. So hopefully we'll see you back tomorrow. All right. Thank you so much. And once again, thank you to Samsung for helping put this all together. Let's all thank them because we would not be here at the Samsung Blog Lounge and doing this live stream for everyone here offline and online. Go to samsung.com slash how Olympic are you? Be one of the first to be part of the Samsung Olympic Genome Project. And once again, keep it right here at What's Trending, youtube.com slash What's Trending. We are bringing you live coverage from South by Southwest. I'm Cheryl Lazar. We'll see you soon. Bye.